Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Lex. Today I wanted to go through a few plants in my collection that I really have been loving for the month of January. All the plants that I'm gonna be showing you guys are plants that have really caught my attention in January. I actually had a ton of new growth in my collection this past month, and I've even had a few Hoya blooms as well. So let's just jump right into it. The first plant that I wanna show you guys is my Philodendron Glorious. This plant is absolutely gorgeous, you guys. The Philodendron Glorious is actually a hybrid Philodendron. It is crossed with a Melanochrysum and a Philodendron Gloriosum. This plant is hands down becoming one of my favorite plants. I absolutely love this plant. I love how it looks and I love how it's growing. So this leaf right here is one of the newest leaves that it just pushed out a few weeks ago and it's absolutely gorgeous. So for a while, this plant has actually been kind of growing like all over the place. It wasn't up until recently where the leaves are kind of now starting to like shift and face in the same direction. You can see that they're still not fully facing the front like I would like them to, but I think over time it'll definitely shift. So I do have this plant growing on one of my moss poles and you can purchase this on my website if you're interested. We have clear and white. So as for care, this plant is really easy. I would 100% recommend the Philodendron Glorious or even the Philodendron Splendid, which is also another Melanochrysum hybrid over the Melanochrysum. And the reason why I say this is because if you know anything about Melanochrysum, them, they are a very finicky plant. Sometimes it takes them a really long time to attach to the pole. They put out really small leaves. Sometimes they just rot out of nowhere. It's kind of just always something. So if you do like the look of the Milano Chrysum, definitely would recommend the Glorious or the Splendid. The Splendid is a Milano Chrysum cross with a Varicosum. So yes, if you don't have one of these, you definitely need to get one. It grows beautifully especially as this matures and gets bigger over time as long as you give this a pull you are going to be okay with it so since this plant does have the velvety leaves i would recommend that you try to give this a decent amount of humidity because if not it might get a little bit crispy like on the ends or something like that so just be mindful of the velvety leaves i keep this plant inside of my mills bell where it's like 80 to 90 percent all the time so it has been doing quite well in there it's been doing much better in there compared to when I had it in my detox cabinet which is a lot less humidity. I am really excited for this plant. I'm excited for it to size up. You can see this leaf here kind of has sized up a bit more than this one. So soon this one is definitely going to need an extension and I think that I am just going to extend it out and just see how big I can get this plant to grow. I really do love this plant. I think it's easy care. I think it's pretty affordable now as well. I highly recommend this plant for your collection. The next plant that I have been loving for the month of January is actually my Syngonium Red Spot Tricolor. It recently did just put out this beautiful leaf here. It's pretty much almost all pink. I'm in love. This plant is very beautiful and it gets a lot of attention on Instagram whenever I post it. The thing that I love about this plant is that it's not just pink and dark green. It has like some light green in it as well. So it makes it really beautiful. For this leaf, you can see the three colors in it. So this one in particular is a part of my collection and I did get this from Equigenera a few months ago and it did almost die on me. When I brought it home, it was doing good for a few weeks and then all of a sudden all the leaves were starting to die and I was left with only one and I was super worried about this plant but within the last few months, it's really pulled through. So now we have four beautiful leaves with a lot of pink in them. I feel like that this one has really good genetics and I'm really in love with it. So my red spot tricolor is actually not as mature as the ones I have on the shop, which I will show you guys right now a side-by-side -side comparison so this right here is what you can expect your red spot tricolor to look like over time the leaf shape kind of will completely change and it's absolutely beautiful and it will just keep putting out those beautifully variegated leaves so personally I am quite the syngonium fan I know a lot of people actually do not like syngoniums but they are one of my favorite type of plants I love the way that they grow they have been so easy for me like you can literally forget about these plants they're so easy and there's so many different types of syngoniums that are out there that aren't talked about. But the Red Spot Tricolor is a fan favorite because of the pink. It's gorgeous, easy growing. If you're looking for a beautifully pink plant, I highly recommend the Syngonium Red Spot Tricolor. The next plant that I've been loving this month is actually a Hoya, and it is my Hoya Obovada. You guys know I've been getting into the Hoyas lately. I'm actually low-key obsessed with them. I really, really want to focus on my Hoya collection this year. So this is it right here. I love these big round 
brown leaves. They are so adorable. So I've actually been growing this Hoya in Pond. I do grow all of my Hoyas in Pond or Lucca. I don't grow them in soil at all and they do so well. So I've had this Hoya for a few months now and it actually was a two leaf cutting. The reason why I've been loving it this month is because it actually bloomed for me and this is the first time a Hoya has bloomed for me besides my Hoya Multiflora. When I saw those flowers you guys I legit wanted to cry. They are so pretty. I felt like such a good plant mom because I was able to get another Hoya to bloom and it was just such a beautiful experience. They were so cute and they were pink my favorite color so I'm hoping in the future that I can get this one to bloom again and some other ones. As for care, this plant is so easy and since it is in pond, all I have to do is top the water off once it gets dry. One thing that I do need to start getting is like trellises for the Hoyas. I have seen people use like the bendable wire, but I don't want anything too thick or too heavy because I only use really small containers, so I'm afraid that it won't fit. So right now I just have it on this stick, but if you guys have any recommendations for like trellises or like a specific type of like wire that you guys use, to make trellises, please let me know because all of my Hoyas are like growing kind of crazy now. As you can see, this one is growing a really long runner. Normally I do cut all my Hoyas down and just propagate them, but for this one in particular, I would like to grow it out. So if you guys do have any trellis recommendations, please let me know. So another favorite of mine for the month of January is another Syngonium. This is one of my Syngonium Arias. I do have two. I have this one here, which is growing in my soil-free potting mix, and then I have one growing in pond, which is a cutting of this one. This has probably been the best Syngonium Aria that I've had. Every time I've had Syngonium Aria, the variegation wasn't that stable, so I would get a lot of green leaves out of them. But this one has been consistently putting out variegation, and I absolutely love it. This leaf right here is the newest leaf, and it's got beautiful variegation. The thing about the Syngonium Aria is that sometimes when a new leaf comes in, it takes a little while for the leaf to really show the variegation. So it's been a while and it's still quite light, but eventually it will get darker. Like this one here, you can see it has that dark green. But you can see that the variegation has definitely been pretty stable. Like I said, I have never had a Syngonium Aria look this good. I don't know if it's a common thing, but every single time I've had this plant in my collection or I've gotten them in for the shop, there have been some that just have like solid green leaves and they just continue to push out green leaves and be low variegated. But this one that I have here has definitely been the best. Just like the Syngonium Red Spot Tricolor, the care is very much the same. I feel that all Syngonium care is exactly the same. I don't feel like you need to do anything special with them. They're not plants that require that much attention or humidity. So if you don't have a Syngonium Aria or Syngonium Red Spot Tricolor, I definitely recommend both. That is all the plants that I have to show you guys today. I hope you guys really enjoy this video and also let me know in the comments what your favorite plant was for the month of January. I hope you guys have a great weekend and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!